After all the efforts you put in to complete your data science preparation and finally ready to transition to data science career. How do you apply for a data science job? My name is Ashok Veda. In this video, I would like to share a few tips and a few, 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 few techniques um, in applying for data science job. Well, if, if you look at it, most people, are uh, either you are a beginner, a junior, or you are a senior executive, or professional working for more than 10, 15 years, applying for a new job is always a challenge. So I'm going to give you four steps to, to make things a little easier. First is what kind of data science job you're looking at. Especially if you're an experienced professional, you should be looking at, you should be clear about what area you would like to work in data science. Right. Obviously, if you have 10 plus years experience, you're not going to code and model the data science. You'll be looking for more techno-functional role, like more like a business consultant in data science, bringing in business, managing team, project delivery, or maybe a project manager in data science. Even for them, a knowledge of data science is important, but working technical becomes a challenging after 10, 15 years of experience. So you'll be looking at more on the high level, manager level of data science jobs. And if you're a junior, just a beginner, right? Any job should be fine at the junior level, maybe a data engineer or maybe a data consultant or a junior data scientist, etc. It's also important from an industry perspective. If you're joining a companies like IT service providers like Accenture and Infosys, etc., they'll be looking for uh, uh, employees or other resources. We have various different skills. Right. Because they have all kinds of uh, clients from very different industries. On the other side, if you're looking for, uh, if you're joining a company like JP Morgan Chase, which is a bank, so they'll be looking for a very specific skills which are relevant for the domain. If you're joining in healthcare, they'll be looking for certain skills, especially deep learning and, and, and related areas, because that's very helpful or very useful in their uh, healthcare. And if you join those kind of companies, you'll be specializing I mean, over a period of time. You become masters of that domain. So it's very important to understand what kind of job you're looking for. Right? If you have well, less clarity, you can do a desk research uh, to, 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 to you know, basically Google and find out various different roles and see in your domain uh, what are the different roles and what are the different um, jobs available accordingly you can decide. So step one, what kind of data science job? Step two, it's, uh, it's, it's more about your profile. You would have had a lot of experience or if you're a beginner, uh, you would have done some projects in your colleges, etc. It's all about how you present yourself. Your story should look like a data science professional story. You might be a Java consultant for, let's say, 15 years or 10 years, all right? And um, now you're trying to switch to data science. Your story should be saying, okay, yes, of course, Java consultant for 10, 15 years, but it should also last six months to one year. All of the efforts you put in data science, how serious are you, what are the projects you are, the highlight of your story should be a data science. And even your previous experience, I'm pretty sure you work with some kind of data, try to highlight that. So your story should not look like a Java professional and a, a story, but it looks like, a, of course, you have been a Java professional, but now you're switching to data science. Your aspirations should reflect in your story. When I say your story, it's nothing but your digital presence, your LinkedIn profile, uh, your resume, and related things. So step two, align your story to data science. Step three, resume or your um, CV. I have taken more than 1,000 interviews in data science past three years. Um, I, I have for my own company, also for other companies. Um, I can tell you, that resume is, is really, really important. And one of the major uh, issue I see in resume is 90% of things are irrelevant to data science. All right. So even in the skills area, so uh, let me be more concrete. In resume, the most important segments are your skills, your experience, and your achievements in a field like awards and certification. These are the very important things because this is where a focus as a recruiter goes on. Other things are okay, like your hobbies and your other details, but uh, skills, experience are very important. All right? The skills section should reflect 80% of data science related skills. Even though you have been spending a lot of many years in other domain, now you are trying to pursue a career in data science. 
So your skill section to reflect data science career. Okay, and even more important, uh, you look at the job description of which job you're applying for. So obviously, when you're trying, preparing your resume, one of the common uh, common suggestions I give normally: do not make a generic resume and shoot it for hundred different job opportunities because a generic resume will never go through. You have to fine tune your resume according to the job description of the job you're applying. So. You read the job description thoroughly, you understand the roles and responses of a particular job and then accordingly you put the keywords in your skills. I'm not saying you put the keywords which you don't have, the skills which you don't have, but try to align the words which is in line with the job descriptions, probably just mention the job descriptions, right? I'm pretty sure you, you would have done your preparation and, and, and got all the knowledge in those areas, but make sure you also mention the keywords. I'm very specific in that because when you apply for a job, there will be a lot of people applying for a job, hundreds, maybe even thousands based on what kind of job it is. And it finally comes down to, um, you know, a, a, a automated uh, softwares which looks at the keyword density. It will see what are the keywords mentioned in the skills area of the job description and it matches the keywords which is in your resume. All right. And the keyword density actually makes you saying that this is the most relevant profile. And that's how you get your first interview call. There are a lot of people who keep complaining saying, I'm not getting a job uh, uh, calls. Two major things in it. Number one, you should align your profile, the keywords, both in skills and experience matching the job description, which means you have to create a resume individually, customize it for every job you sent it. I'm not saying that you have to put something which you don't have, but you have to align the words uh, with respect to the job description. Okay, that's, that's very important. And number two, notice period. So I would say notice period, if it is more than one month, you should talk to your employer and try to make it one month or less than that. Because most of the data science requirements, even going through a consulting or a direct, if you put more than one month, like two months, three months, it's not very interesting because the, the requirement is usually uh, it's, it's, it's immediate or at least less than a month. So if you put three months notice period, Though it is true, maybe you have signed the contract, but you should have an uh, arrangement to actually buy it back or have some discussion with your current employer and always mention less than one month. And from my experience, uh, mentoring thousands of people in this domain, in, in data science, someone has a longer than one month experience has a very less chance to get a call. Just to wrap up the step three, resume, your skills and experience should reflect data science more than 80% and the keyword should be aligned with the job description. All right. And then ensure that your notice period is at least maximum one month, less is better. Okay. And one last thing, try to, uh, don't try the entire project related things of data science and experience in, in, a, you know, in a paragraph in your first page. Try to only put a couple of lines, maybe two lines maximum about the projects or the experience related to data science that should be in the top of the experience. The rest of the details, put it in an extra or an add on page where you explain the project and most importantly, what is your contribution to the project. Many times I take interviews, people talk about the project, actually they put a lot of information on the project in resumes, but they don't really mention what is their contribution. That's very important because as a hiring manager, I'll be interested, what is your contribution to the project, not the project itself. So step three is resume. And step four <clears throat> is the application strategy. So uh, it's a common mistake that they try to apply to 100 jobs a day, basically shooting arrows in the dark and expecting something will come out of it. When you do, if you're doing that, then probably you're not fine tuning your resume, which means that your resume is never popping up in any of the 100 jobs you apply for, okay? A better application job a strategy would be maximum five to 10. I would say five to 10 applications per day because each application will actually take significant time, at least often have a time. So if you're applying five to 10, you're already spending two and a half hours to five hours. That's a maximum time I would think anyone would spend in applying for a job. So even if you apply five jobs a day in 20 days in a month, you would have already applied hundred jobs, all right? And the reason I say only five is you have to fine tune it. Step three, remember? So you have to fine tune the resume to the required level that you know it's matching the keywords aligned and it reflects that you are a data science professional. 
All right, and application strategy is also very important to track the application. So it's like you throw the application and you never really follow up. So you should follow up. You send a mail. If you have an email of the hiring manager or any of the contact details, please try to uh, uh, send an email <coughs> as a follow up. All right. And also, it's a very good idea to connect with the mutual connections in the company and also the friends who are working in the company, your colleagues or the ex colleagues. Send a mail saying I applied to the job and try to see if how, somehow they're connected to the hiring manager of the department that increases your chances of getting hired or getting the first entry call. So these are the four steps. Step one, decide what kind of jobs you apply. Step two, you make your story, which should look like a data science story. So you align your story. Step three is resume. Ensure that skills and experience reflects most of the keywords in your job description. Step four, application strategy. Do not apply a lot of jobs, apply only five to 10 and because it actually takes time. Read the job description and apply. And these are the four important steps you have to follow in applying for data search. Apart from that, few other things I would like to share. I often see that uh, many people get dejected. Uh, you know, if you fail in the first interview, that's very common. I mean, how many of you get job in first interview? So failing in, in interviews is really, really common. What's more important is to actually keep motivating, keep your motivation and learn from what went wrong. Another important thing you need to remember, your hiring manager might just simply tell you that, yeah, we don't take freshers. Just think about it. If they don't take freshers, why didn't they even call you? I mean, they obviously know you were a fresher. So, which is a very, like, you know, mostly they would not like to debate. So they will say you are a fresher or you have a less experience just to, you know, communicate, give a feedback that you are not being selected. It would be a good practice if you act, if they actually give you a proper feedback, why you're not selected, but it's very subjective. So which skill you lack, it's very difficult to say. So the easiest answer most of the uh, uh, interviewers and employers give when, when they want to reject is we found a better profile, it's actually a good answer. If they say that you are not, you, you, have, you need more experience or you, you need at least one year experience if you're a fresher, uh, don't get dejected because that's not the actual reason. Let me tell you, more than 50-60% of the jobs in the market in data science and machine learning is for freshers. All right, And this is a beginner's question. So the idea, the myth of you need to have at least one year, two years experience to get into data science job is actually wrong, right? And probably someone who is telling that is just giving an excuse to themselves to save their face or if it's a HR or someone is telling it, they don't have an idea or maybe they're just giving a false reason for your rejection. So don't believe that freshers cannot make it do. I myself have uh, more than 100 people in my past three years who are freshers switched to data science, okay? So they're doing perfect and they're being a data scientist already. So. Switching to data science as a fresher, not switching actually, to starting your career as a data science is absolutely possible. In fact, more than 50% of the jobs for data science is for freshers. Okay. For experienced people, there's a common dilemma saying that, uh, you know, if you go to a data science job, you're switching a new domain, you'll be perceived as fresher. It's completely wrong. Your 10, 15 years of experience still counts because data science is an extra skill you're adding. And whatever experience you have, both the business, soft skills, management skills, everything counts. So simply put, your experience counts. And also it's more important to ensure that you don't have to come down in your salary levels. You can keep up your salary levels. You can have a hike when you switch to data science. So don't believe that, you know, if you're, if you're coming to data science, you're completely switching your career to something else. No, that's not correct. You are actually moving up in your career ladder. Okay. Few more things, um, uh, small things. Uh, yes, you, have, you have to really keep, keep yourself motivated. Uh, it usually takes two to three months. The people who actually successfully finally make it um, are the people who keep on learning. Every step you, you, you fail or you didn't get a call or you just look at the reason for it and try to improve on it. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, I'm very confident in, in, um, in, 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 in proper effort and you know, proper learning, you'll definitely switch data science. The good news is we have millions, in fact, 58 million new jobs being created in another two years in data science and machine learning and AI. So it's absolutely uh, a most, um, what do you call, most luxurious as well as most rewarding career option. So do not give up. If you have, you have completed your preparation, if you're, still, you're trying to, to get into data science, keep trying. 
And if you find any difficulty, you can always reach me. So I keep my, I leave my contact details, especially uh, you know uh, when you when you have uh, attended the interview and you want to reflect on that. I'll be more than happy to work with you and you know basically make that uh, experience learning experience. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions, you can obviously leave comments and also send a mail to me. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.